My loneliness is killing me. I'm Britney Spears in the head right now because I'm avoiding being fearfully created right now. Because fearfully created should be making sure she's on top of her meal plan. Making sure she's doing what she's supposed to do. Make sure she's cooking every night and not eating out and not ordering 50 billion jillion hamburgers. McDoubles from McDonald's. Now, I ain't eating the McDoubles, but... Somebody is. And McDoubles get, they get expensive. They ain't no such thing as a dollar menu anymore. So what I'm gonna do, because I can't trust future Marina to actually cook the dinners that she plans in the evenings, present Marina is just gonna go hammer time on it and just cook a whole bunch of stuff. So future Marina has no excuses. You gotta play smarter, not harder. so many wax melts in here. I mean, hundreds of wax melts. So I'm going to try to etch off some of the list this spring and summer by just completing an entire container of whatever scent. So I'm starting with this and I only have two of these left. These smell so good. It's about four wicks and, oh no, four wicks candle <laughs> company. It smells amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna etch this off the list. So two days, cause I've been changing out daily, two more in two days, that one will be done. So all these meals I'm making ahead for future Marina are all under $20. Now, I know this says $24.50, but that's because it has a pack of chicken I'm splitting in two for two separate meals in it. So half of the chicken is going in this Hawaiian barbecue chicken recipe and the other half of it is going in a casserole recipe that I'm doing in this video too. This next recipe is under $20 too. It's coming in at $19.13 and this is the hamburger hash brown casserole that one of you guys asked me to show you guys. I make this quite often. It's one of our favorite meals, but anytime anybody asks to see it, I always try to stop and do it for you because it is that good. It's one of my most favorite meals. I can't have it a lot because it does have potatoes in it. I'm trying to watch my carbs and stuff, but it is definitely one of my most favorite meals ever. And then the last one coming in cheapest is at $3.90. It's a chicken casserole with just green beans as a side. So for those who didn't know, my channel actually started out as like a, a mini cooking channel. It wasn't long after people started telling me I didn't know what I was doing that I realized maybe it's not for me. <laughs> I think the Lord just kind of had to push me on here and I just had to kind of navigate and figure out where I was supposed to be within the the platform <laughs> during all that cooking i kind of learned how to cook through not knowing how to cook get it did they smell like a fart i feel like anything like that smells like a fart i don't think that they do i'm gonna slap two chicken breasts in the thing here and call it a day see y'all later <laughs> just kidding that's what's going with cock in case you needed a visual i'm gonna set these aside because we're gonna use these three chicken breasts and another meal to kind of get all of our bang for our buck this thing was 977 and i think on the app it said 12 dollars. so i'm actually saving a couple of dollars because mine wasn't 12 dollars. it was 977 based on the poundage you know just imagine if i was a giant chicken breast and they charged me per pound Walmart would be rich. They'd probably have to do it on the black market or something because I'd say that's pretty illegal, but Walmart would be rich. One thing I learned, I took this away if I didn't take nothing else away, is I have a lot of hair and it gets everywhere. But one thing I learned is the world is so divided on whether you wash chicken or not. Half the people are yelling at me to wash chicken and half the people are yelling at me not to wash the chicken. So I'm kind of conflicted and I feel like the kid that's in the middle of a divorce battle whenever this topic gets brought up. So I did a little Googling and Google split down the middle too. <laughs> but Dr. Oz at one point sometime in his career 
according to the internet, said that washing your chicken just kind of spreaded the spreaded spread out the nasty like germs all over your kitchen and your ch kitchen sink. So my mama always washed her chicken, but my mama also like washed her whites with her whites and her darks with her darks and her colors with her colors and her towels with her towels. She went she went the extra mile, and I just don't have it in me. So, what I like to do is I like to just plead the blood of Jesus over our food. We always pray before we eat anyway, and I figure that that kind of covers it. I kind of cover all bases when I do that. I still got a hair. It's stuck in my glasses. I'm using the Walmart brand of these chicken flavored stuffing mixes. Don't go getting that stove top stuff. Yeah, it's really good, but this kind of tastes the same. I'm not gonna say it's like spot on, but it's good enough. And it's definitely worth spending less than a dollar on this and almost a dollar more on the other stuff. It's just not as easy to open. <laughs> I'm gonna just pour this, look. I'm gonna just pour this all on top of my chicken breast, like so. I found this on the web for chicken casserole. Check it out. Series reminded me how to cook this because I kind of forgot mid clip. Okay, I added view recent photos to the list. No, I don't want to view recent photos to the list. I'm gonna take a second one because we are a family of six and we only have two chicken breasts in here. Now those, once I stir it all up later, that's gonna kind of bulk up the casserole, but I still need a little more. So I'm adding a second helping, second box of this chicken casserole stuff on top of that, kind of, you know playing it for a minute. I don't know why my husband insists on putting my cream of chicken at the very top of the very top cabinet. He knows that's the thing I reach for. When I do cook, I cook a lot of processed stuff just because I have, I, I really suck at cooking. I'm trying to learn and I can cook a few things from scratch. One time I cooked bread from scratch, but most of my from scratch meals, they have like condensed cream of something other in there. And he knows that. So why he puts it on the top of the top shelf every single time, I have no idea. Now I gotta go get him and gotta go interrupt him from what he's doing to come over here and reach me the cream of chicken. I'm gonna open one of these cans and just plop this stuff cause it's like gelatin on top mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put water in this can and we're not done but I've been holding my pee and I have to go use the bathroom really bad I'll be right back okay I washed my hands I know if I didn't say that some people would assume I didn't so just to clarify I washed my hands <laughs> I've dumped all this in I filled this thing up with water I'm actually going to fill it up a second time and go around it one more time. This dressing stuff soaks up like anything liquid, so that'll just help it. That'll just help it not to like dry out. And then I'm just gonna like smooth all this gelatin -y chicken stuff. This looks like silicone, like it. it I'm going to wait until it comes out to salt and pepper it because this stuff is already a little salty in itself. I kind of mix it all up with the chicken and everything and then salt and pepper it so the top layer isn't so salty. I'm gonna cut it with a lemon pull and we are going to cook this for about an hour and 15 minutes in 350 degree preheated oven. Right on time. And look at that, I don't even know why I struggle with cooking at home. That was so easy. I'm gonna pair it with some green beans and I'll be done with it. We're gonna do an hour and 15 minutes. You probably just would have to do an hour, but I'm always looking for that extra 15 minutes just to ensure that I don't get salmonella. Something I'm learning is to clean up as you go. That's something I never used to do as a young mom, like as a young YouTuber <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> I would never clean up as I went and then I would be left with like this horrible, mess at the end and it would just dishearten me from wanting to cook because I always made a mess. Now I make a mess but I clean up as I go so it's not as big of a mess. I say that like I'm teaching you something but you probably already know that. I'm gonna wipe off the counter here and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my crock pot down so that I can get the crock pot meal going because this is a new one I haven't ever tried. Oftentimes when I make that chicken casserole I got Miss Martha on here <laughs> she always says Marina is chicken casserole the only thing you know how to cook? <laughs> it's probably the only thing I know how to cook good. That and hamburger hash from casserole. But I'm open 
to suggestions. So if you want to leave me your favorite recipe in the comments, I will absolutely try it. I will try it and I will vlog it. <laughs> and I will be honest with you and let you know how it is. I need to wipe down this crock pot because the dust is dusting right now. Or I haven't used it. <laughs> got my two chicken breasts in there. We're trying this for the first time together. I got me a can. How big is this can right here? A 20 ounce can of pineapple chunks and I'm gonna pour this in there about that much I left a little bit in there I'm um, just cuz I only have two chicken breasts if I had three chicken breasts I'll probably put the whole can in but I'm leaving a little bit in here I saw this recipe on the internet and I'm kind of modifying it to do sort of a sandwich thing with I got this entire thing of Barbecue sauce, sweet baby rays is the only way to go. This is an 18 ounce one. I will do great value on literally everything. I would do great value dentures if that was an option, but this is one thing I will not do great value on because nobody does it like sweet baby rays. It just don't taste right. There ain't nothing that can get that close to it. So I usually pay the extra dollar or two on this stuff just to get this stuff because it does make a difference to me. I'm not a big barbecue sauce fan, but I do like Baby Ray's, so that says a lot. All right, I'm gonna cook this on high for about five hours, five, five and a half hours. I'm gonna have so many smells going on in here, it's gonna smell like a fart covered Fruit Loop. <laughs> I'm going to real quickly do a cake that I found on Pinterest and I'll leave it linked down below and I'll leave the ingredient list up here. It's peach, brown sugar peach. I don't even know what looks so good about it, but I have a feeling the kids are going to flip out and they've been wanting like, they want to go to the dollar store every day and get a candy bar and <laughs> that's not possible. So I figured while I'm going ahead and bulking up, making these meals ahead of time for this week, might as well do a little dessert too. That way if they're feeling something sweet, they can go get a slab of this cake and it'll kind of fix that dollar store candy hankering that they have. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is that it's, you're supposed to peel peaches and I didn't know you were supposed to peel peaches. I've never peeled a peach a day in my life. I don't even know how to peel a peach, but I guess I'm gonna look up a tutorial and we're gonna learn. <laughs> we're gonna learn today. I don't mind the goat milk box. <laughs> I know that we need. Ingredients we're gonna need this white crayon and peach ocean spray juice because they didn't have the Goya peach nectar stuff that I was supposed to have at Walmart. So I can't find nothing peach. They don't make just peach juice. So I felt like peach wine, but I thought the safer route would be like to go with this. So I've got white crayon and peach. I, I tried to smell on it. <laughs> okay. I got four peaches. These are the peaches I was talking to you guys about. They're like, you're supposed to peel them. I don't know how to peel them yet, but we're going to learn. And if you've never peeled a peach before, don't feel bad. I'm 32 and never knew that. I thought peaches just came peeled apparently. Um, I got four of those. Got a bag of powdered sugar, a thing of yellow cake mix, butter, heavy whip, and three eggs. Shane forgot the brown sugar, so he had to run to the store to get it. In the meantime, look at my Mother's Day present. I squalled like a baby. I'm gonna try some of this peach crayon. This white crayon peach juice, cause I've never tried it before. I got ice in here. Never tried it before. And while she was gone, I wanna really smell it too. I'm, I'm, for some reason, I really wanna smell it. That's not so much smell what I thought it was gonna smell like. Ew. I'm just gonna do a little bit. All right, ready? Let's see. I don't think so. Well, see the cranberry part I like, the peach part. I'm making a whole peach dessert and I don't like peach. That's because I don't want to eat it. I just want to make it for the kids and I know if I make it with something that I don't like, I won't touch it. I'm going to make the cake mix and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to do the cake mix, the oil, and the eggs, but I'm also going to add some food coloring and the juice in there too. food coloring 
on the little list, but it says orange food coloring. It's optional, but since this is for the kids, I'm going to do it. Shane is having him a blast though right now. I'm gonna leave the ingredient list on the screen here. Half a cup. So that you will have a straight up ingredient list and you don't have to worry about pausing and stopping this to write it down because I hate doing that myself. And as always, wait till we try it and we tell you don't start it mid video because if it tastes like a fart, we're gonna tell you. I don't have orange, but I have yellow and red, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make orange. <laughs> vibrant orange <laughs> it's turning Ronald McDonald red though I think I put a little bit too much red see it says fold in peaches but it don't tell me how to fold them in and obviously I can't just fold in a peach ball so I think I'm just gonna peel it with the tater peeler and then slice it and fold it in that way chunk it maybe slice it or chunk it we like things chunky around here I'm gonna chunk it it's actually turning into the prettiest peach color. It looks more peach on in person than it does on here, but it just turned out to be such a pretty peach color. Okay, so there they go. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Is it like, that peels nicely. I might've been making a mountain out of a mohill. I might know what I'm doing. That peels better than any tater I've ever tried to peel. I've never known what a raw peach tastes like. I know what a canned peach tastes like, but I've never known what a raw peach tastes like. Is, is canned peaches raw? These are the questions of life that like go through my head. Y'all get a open look, an open look into the questions that flow through my head on a daily basis. Did I drop them? On a daily basis. That's the prettiest peach color. I could not have perfected a peach color better if I tried. Wait, do I have to cut out the middle of this though? Because it's kind of got like a core to it a little bit. Kind of like an apple. Hmm. Oh, it does have a core. Okay. Maybe. Help. <laughs> I'm thinking if I should do cupcakes instead of a cake. Joey, yeah. cupcakes or cake, which one? This is what they look like. So the peaches, I'm wondering how they're gonna do in cupcake form. But I do have a little bit left over, maybe enough to do a little cake with. So we'll see how they turn out. I'm gonna cook them on, I'm gonna bake them on 350 for about 28 minutes. And then every five seconds I'll be checking on them to make sure I don't burn them. I was able to get like a little cake out of it. Okay, I only had to cook these for 25 minutes. So I'm gonna get to work on the sauce, the brown sugar sauce now. It sets really, really quickly once you get it like cooked. So you put it on top of these and then it sets and like if you try to move it or anything, it'll crack. So it's sort of like a glaze, a crusted glaze. So I'm gonna get started on it, get that topped with them and then these I'll leave out for, you know, this week. This I might let them have tonight. And this is too, and it shouldn't have been. Oh, look. Yeah, look, look, look. 
see? It has a little clumps in it, a few clumps in it, but should be fine. But yeah, it's it's literally crystallizing. Huh? It, it's almost like ganache style. All right, I got my hamburger meat ground up here. One of y'all asked me to see my hamburger hash brown casserole, <laughs> and I make it quite often. I have several videos where I've done it back in. I mean, I've been on here for almost four years, so I've made it quite a few times, but I'll quickly show you how I make it in case you want to make it. It is by far one of my most favorite dishes. I can't eat it quite as much as I used to because it does have potatoes in it, and I'm trying really hard to, like, watch my carbs and sugar intake and stuff like that. I still have some. I just, I'm trying really hard not to because I'm morbidly obese and I don't want to die soon, so. <laughs> I will make it for you tonight, and I might have a bite tonight because I ain't ate it in a hot minute. I ground up my hamburger meat. I'm gonna turn my thing back on here because I let it sit for a minute just because I had something else to do. I'm gonna put a little bit of beef broth in here and some flour to make a roux. I never knew what a roux was until YouTube. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a roux and then I'm gonna add my vegetables. I'm gonna add my corn and I'm gonna add my green beans. And then I'm gonna add Worcestershire sauce, onions if you want to. I think I'm gonna omit the onions this time though. Beef broth and flour to make a roux corn green beans onions if you want it and then once all that's mixed in Worcestershire sour sauce and ketchup all that's gonna be mixed into this it's gonna sound really gross it's gonna look really gross but it's banging So I get asked a ton about how I do my envelope savings method. And it has changed over the years. Used to just do plain envelopes and keep all the money in the envelope. Then I went from doing envelopes to transferring big sums of cash like to my bank and like keeping it that way to keep track of it. But since a short while after moving here, I've been doing it a different way. And this way is top tier. I'm doing now that has worked better than any other method I've ever done ever this thing is so neat when you open it up here it has this front page with all these little bubbles and all these bubbles signify the envelopes but you don't put a dollar per envelope what you do is for each envelope there's a set amount of money you put into each sleeve so right here you put a dollar here two dollars here three dollars here four dollars but when you get to like 44 you're gonna put $44 in this little pocket. So it's not like you put $1 and you save $100. You put whatever number is on the front of the little pocket. That's how much you put in that pocket. And once you have all of these bubbles filled in and all of these pockets full with the correct amount, then you'll be saving $5,050. I got each of my kids one of these to start saving for their futures because they have savings accounts. But those savings accounts are money that I save for them. I want them to learn how to save their own money because this is something Shane and I did not learn. Shane and I have went through bankruptcy. We went through money problems. We've been poorer than poor. We've been dirt poor and a lot of that 
is due to not enough money. When you don't have enough money, there's not really anything you can save. That's why people like Dave Ramsey, I like Dave Ramsey, and I like his snowball method where you tackle the smallest debts up to the biggest debts to get out of debt. He's really smart in a lot of areas. But he said one thing one time that really messed me up. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he it referred to like basically that anybody can get themselves out of debt. And he basically made this caller feel bad for not having enough income to pay off their debt. And I sat there and I was like, wait a minute, like you can save all day long, but if you don't have enough money coming in to like make your bills and have anything left over, let, I mean, you can barely pay your electric bill, let alone saving anything. Sometimes people can't help it. Sometimes people can't get out of debt because there's just not enough money. So a lot of our poverty came from not only being like ignorant when it comes to money. We did not come from like rich families at all. We came from like poverty basically, especially Shane. So a lot of our money problems came from lack of knowledge when it comes to money handling. I, we didn't know how to save. We didn't know how to budget. We didn't know how to do none of that. I got married when I was 18 and I went straight into being a wife and a homemaker. And then later on after a couple of kids, Colton and Cameron, I went into a full-blown career and then I stayed in that career for a while. I'd say until my girls were three or four. So I was in a career for quite a while, but even with me working in my career that I had and that I was going full force in, like I didn't have, we didn't have a lot of money. And then it was like this counteracting thing where we came from being so poor to now we have a little bit of money and it's kind of like when you give a kid money and it blows a hole in their pocket that's kind of the effect it had on us so it got us in a whole bunch of mess that's why i'm so adamant on doing envelope saving methods now making sure we have a cushioned savings account making sure all the bases are covered because i never want to be in that position again when i started doing my envelope saving method the way that i do it it wasn't for like home makeovers because I wasn't really into YouTube like I, it wasn't like I was spending a lot of money on home makeovers or home remodels or renovations or anything like that. I was doing it for groceries for the electric bill. There was four paychecks coming in a month and I was having to split those paychecks up into little parts to make sure everything got paid and everything was covered. So that's why I started doing the envelope method and it took us from being really really bad with money handling to being just kind of bad <laughs> money handling and it's continually improved over the last four years and that's literally the only way I can keep our money in like a little area specifically for something a lot of the stuff that I do around the house it's really expensive and I can never just pull that out of my bank account and just go on with it like that's renovating is not cheap at all so when i have a specific area for it and i'm adding a little bit here and there and it's growing and it's getting bigger then once i see that growth and that money is like building up to be something that i can really use towards my house it makes me not want to dip into it for a big mac i don't dip into my envelopes for anything i don't i don't dip into it for nothing <laughs> and then before i know it i have the amount in there Sometimes it takes a little while. You guys know I've been saving for six months before before I can touch a, a remodel. But before I know it, I've got enough to do what I want to do with it. Whether it's a birthday gift, Christmas. I always do the envelope method for our Christmas fund for the kids. Um, birthdays, holidays, Easter baskets, things like that go in envelopes too. I do several envelopes at once because I like to have a continual envelope thing getting full. So if you do a few at once, more than likely you will have you'll after a while you'll begin to have a continual flow of envelopes ready to go for whatever you're wanting. So if I were just to put say I needed a thousand dollars in an envelope, say okay, I put five hundred in it this month and five hundred in it next month. It would be two months before I had that thousand dollars I needed to go towards whatever I was putting it towards. But if I have a thousand dollar envelope for something here, I have a two hundred dollar envelope for something here, and I have a fifty dollar envelope for something here, and I take five hundred and put it in this envelope, but then I take a hundred and put it in this envelope, and then I take 25 and put it in this envelope and I keep spreading it out within envelopes within another week or two I'm gonna have one of these envelopes full that one of the not so large envelopes one of the smaller envelopes And I'm gonna be able to put it towards what I want to put it towards I'll be able to occupy myself with that $50 one or that $200 one and That will keep me working and keep me working towards remodeling the house while this big one is 
accruing money. I am a patient person by nature, but so I don't have to do it that way. I just like doing it that way. But if you're not a patient person, I highly suggest doing it that way. I don't know. I'm no expert, but just from my experience, like I'm not, I'm not anybody to give anybody money advice. I promise y'all I'm really not. But just from my experience, if you want to know what I think about it, not as an advice to you, just as you just want to know just as like a look into like what how I do things and why I do things if you're not a very patient person if you're very impatient about things I would definitely do it that way just so you have something to do continuously and you're not having to wait a long time for that really really big one to get full that's why I do a lot of little updates and I do a lot of big updates because I stagger them so that I can be doing something at all times used to I would just keep an envelope I would just write with a marker I'll link the video I think I showed you guys a video I have two videos where I talk a little bit about the envelope method and I'll link them down below but I would just take my envelope everywhere and I would get out of it and once that money would be gone it would be gone but as the renovation started getting bigger I couldn't carry around an envelope with all that money in it so I began to just put the envelope there as like a visual thing I would lay my envelope in my envelope area but it would have no money in it and that money would be in my bank account but I would sort of do a checkbook sort of thing to make sure I had enough in my bank account and that that specific money for that envelope wasn't getting touched. It's kind of like balancing a checkbook really. It's not that hard. It sounds a little bit hard, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I would just like sort of balance a checkbook in a little notebook just to make sure the money that this envelope represented was in the bank account and not getting touched. So I've done it both of those ways. But then when I came across this, it was a game changer because I began in my own little folders like this doing my envelope methods in this way. So the way that I do it now is I have me a little thing right here. I don't use this one in particular because this one is for something else. But the way that I'm doing it is I just write out a little thing like this and I do the same thing. And then I get the baseball card pocket for my binder and it's the same thing as these basically and I put numbers on them and each of the numbers represent how much money I put in that thing so let's say I need a thousand dollars okay I need a thousand dollars for a kitchen island so that means that so I'm only going to count from one to something whatever that something is that's going to get me a thousand dollars I'm going to bubble in each one of these from starting at one all the way down if you're doing a bigger one like this, you don't have to start at one, but if you're saving at something particular, like that's a thousand dollars, I'm going to start at one and I'm going to go all the way down the line until I have a thousand dollars within these right here. Once I have the thousand dollars, I can put it in the bank and then immediately do the project or I can let it sit there for a little bit and I can balance out my checkbook per se so that I know it's sitting in there and so that I know it doesn't get touched. I would highly suggest these the five thousand dollar and the five thousand and fifty dollar ones though if you're wanting to save for like your kids or for your kids future big things like that this will help you kind of keep up with what you're saving and it's just a fun way to get the kids involved too when my kids saw this they saw it as sort of a game and that's helping them learn how to save i actually prefer this way over the actual envelope way now because it just is easier and though these are for five thousand and fifty dollars you can modify these and do whatever however many numbers you need to get to the certain amount uh that you need to do whatever you're going to do so if you do these by yourselves and you don't buy these like these if you like get a little binder a mini binder at the dollar tree and then you get just a piece of cardstock or paper and then put it in a sleeve then you can you can do the dry erase marker bubble method and like I just put random dates and stuff up here like that's been there but you can just do the random bubble out method then you can put little baseball card insert sleeves and then once you get done saving for whatever, whatever you're saving for you can just swap off that dry erase marker and then start all over again whether you buy one or you make one these things are under ten dollars so it would really be just as cheap to buy it than it would be to make it if you did make it you can modify it to be whatever amount you needed but that's how I do my envelope method. It's really not hard. If it was hard, I wouldn't be able to do it. I have had a ton of people who have done it though, especially my old school friends on here, like the ones that have been with me for a while and they know how I do it because they've been here to watch the videos where I explain how I do it beforehand. I've had people tell me like, hey, this envelope method changed the game for me. I won't ever go back to another way and stuff like that. I actually originally took the advice from an older couple 
who were very very set for life and I asked them one day how they got to that point in life and they told me they do even now having all the money they have now they do an envelope savings method still to this day they take their envelope to the grocery store and they grocery shop out of that envelope when somebody who's that set in life gives you that, advi that advice you kind of take it and run with it you expect something to come out of it and something really did i would advise not keeping it in your house though because like if there was a disaster or something that you would lose all of that so keep it outside of your house i never keep any of my envelopes in the house and while it's a pain to go somewhere to put the money in it it's better to be safe than sorry so anytime i ever do any amount of saving in an envelope or anything even that binder if you'll notice there wasn't anything in that binder because I don't keep any binders or envelopes or anything like that in my house and I would advise anybody else not to either thank y'all for hanging out with me I hope y'all have a blessed morning and night whatever it is wherever you're at know that I love you but Jesus loves you so much more I'll see y'all later